Lemon here for All Out Cricket, powered by Kookaburra Cricket. We've got Jeremy Coney pretending to be Adam Collins for this week and doing a fine impression as the Chapel Hadley series has come to an end. It's over. Not exactly, Included. Not exactly the way gone. that Australians would have. You're gone, Australia. Um, that's a shame, really, but you caused it on. You brought it about on yourselves, didn't you? You're short of runs in both games. Top order failed. You leave Warner, Smith, Kawaja, and then Wade out. Well, <laughs> I rest my case. Uh, in, in both games, bowled out for bowled out in uh, 47 overs, exactly 47 overs both games. So it would have, would have been handy to face another three. Well, you're weak in the last three, clearly. So, so you need to use those 47 a lot better than you did. So going back to that first game, it seems a long time ago now, doesn't I, it? It seems ages ago. I've aged myself. I started with brown hair. <laughs> Look at it, how it's changed. You didn't have a beard. Ridiculous. <laughs> it's true. We've been all at yeah. sea for oh, that time. Yeah. Desert Island stuff. Yeah. Uh, Martin Guptill made runs. He hasn't made a lot of runs against Australia, but he chipped in with 61 in that first match there. He did. He did and uh, did a decent job at the top to get the sort of the accelerator down on the floor, didn't he? Um, and then pulled out. He'd done enough, he thought. So that's <laughs> and he, then he did his hamstring. He did. He did his hamstring, pulled out, and um, really, I think, probably missed... Well, he missed the Napier game. What happened in that match? Uh, I, I don't remember. I think I've blocked it out. Haven't most of us. We blocked it out because it was a fiasco anyway. So, And then he wasn't going to make this. But we've had a little reasonable replacement mm-hmm. today. Brownlee did okay. That's right. Dean Brownlee looked very good opening in the innings. He had the Bush Ranger beer, the full yeah. sort of Ned Kelly gig. And, uh, I mean, you know, that gets people on side immediately, unless they're Brian Waddle, who hates facial hair. But everybody else enjoys a good, a good... Uh, is that why? Can't grow it. And he keeps his head down because of it. There's weight there. There's weight. And it attaches itself and around the helmet. Around. Have you noticed that? It's actually, no. It sneaks out and underneath and around. It's brilliant. Holds it down. Extra strap. So if he gets 100, does that mean he can't take the helmet off? Correct. Unless he pulls his beard. That would be very painful, wouldn't it? The whole thing. Unveiling his skin from bottom up. Oh, God. It's like Mission Impossible, you know. I'm not a man. I'm a horse. <laughs> That's right. Incredible. Well, who knows who he is under there? Maybe it was just Martin Guptill pretending to be someone else. Imran. Uh, well, it could have been Inzamam al Oh, well, I, I did notice a bit of familiarity and style with uh, Inzamam on the cut shot there, but probably getting on a bit in years nonetheless. Uh, but but look, we're looking at, the, at this first game, you know, Neil Broom did very well as well as a comeback player. He made 70-odd, uh, and they sort of put on 2-8-6, and, and you thought maybe it was enough down there, and then the Australians fell to pieces. They were 5 for 54, and then 6 for 67, yeah. and it should have been, they should have been uh, done for under 150, surely. They should have, and I think most sides would have felt they would beat Australia by around about 100 runs. Uh, in that, but then they didn't count on Stoinis, who they hadn't heard of. He sneaked in the back door, rowing across the Tasman, and, and arrived at the cricket ground. And they said, "Who is he? Well, look, come and have a game." Well, that's right. You, ke- you kept calling him Stoinoff S- on Stoinoff, the broadcast. Stoinoff, I had Stoinis, I had all sorts of names. Astyrus. He but, was uh, 146, not out. He makes 11 sixes, uh, and he's coming in at you know five for none, as we said, uh, and After just a good bowling performance too, actually. Um, I, I mean, he had a fantastic day, and uh, he, he really threatened New Zealand and got to a point where New Zealand were going to lose that match uh, if they weren't going to take wickets. That's, and it her, came that's about right. In a strange way, didn't it? But I mean, uh, yeah, the top order failed, and that really cost Australia. So, yes, join us. He got Kane Williamson out, he got Guptill out, and he got Colin Munro out. So, three pretty handy wickets for 49 off 10 overs, and then comes out. He bowled the 10 overs straight as well, mind you. Uh, Aaron Finch just had him bowl 10 back to back. And then he comes out and bats from, uh, what was it, about the 12th over through to the 47th and makes 140 not out. Yeah, and hit the ball so cleanly. I don't, I mean, New, New Zealand have fairly small grounds, and, and of those, Eden Park is pretty eccentric, you'd have to say, the shape. And so it's 55 metres hit, and he just, but he was clearing them very, very very comfortably. Didn't matter what the spin, didn't matter what the, uh, the, the, the opening bowlers, he just, he just pummeled them. And mainly straight, I'd have to say. And uh, I would have thought some of the others would have felt a little chastened when they saw that to see what could be done. So Josh Hazelwood run out at the non-strikers end by Williamson, six runs short. It was a moral victory for the Australians, really. I, I, I'll claim that. One nil on the moral count.
Moral count, but not high ground. Yes. Uh, and then it was nil all on the moral and high ground. It was very much a low ground count in Napier because the ground was sodden and we couldn't get on for a game. And then a similar sort of game here with New Zealand setting that 280-odd total and then Australia getting very close in the chase. Uh, it really should have chased. I mean, Ross Taylor batted particularly well and made 100. Mitchell Santner batted well at the back end of the innings, 38 not out from him. And, and Brownlee, and Brownlee, as we mentioned, yeah. with that uh, 60-odd to open. But then, you know, chasing... Uh, Really, it was that big hitting last partnership. Cummins and Stark, they needed 33 from 32. They had uh, a couple of wickets in hand and they should have really strolled it in from there. But it was the middle order once again, wasn't it, that put the pressure on those players. They had to respond and, and they did really. Uh, you can't ask your, your tail order batsmen and their tail enders to do all the work for you every game. Um, they nearly got you over the line in Auckland. Uh, here they were a little further short, but threatened certainly, and New Zealand were feeling pretty uncomfortable. It was the likes of Maxwell not getting away. Uh, Head got 50 and could have gone on. So did uh, Finch, yep. the captain. He got to 50 quite quickly and could have gone on as well, but didn't. And so those players, I suppose, Marshall Hanscom feel disappointed. Hanscom and Sean Marsh, not yeah. many from them in either match. They'll feel disappointed that they weren't able, on a placid pitch really, uh, and not, not doing too much. The ball wasn't swinging much. So they, they'll feel disappointed they didn't offer more. Plenty of nerves from New Zealand at the end. They were worried about it slipping away. And then it was uh, really just a, an absolute stellar performance from Trent Bolt. He's uh, so often been the man New Zealand turned to. Six for 33 from his 10 overs. Took the last wicket from the last ball of his last over just to make sure his figures were nice and neat and clean for us. Yeah, but also did some work up front too when Southey was leaking runs, so he held that first those first few overs together, and then when came when he came back, yeah, and he did work in the field, some lovely diving stops, cramped up, <laughs> and then came back to finish with those wickets at the end and polish Australia off, so deserved man of the match, I don't know, Pete, Peter Muskimmon, the cameraman, keeps talking about him as, as number one bowler, and he probably is. But, um, yeah, he deserved it today. Uh, New Zealand will have felt uncomfortable at moments. I think Williamson grew a bit as a captain, bowled himself, put men in catching positions when sometimes he would leave them out on saving the one, and that, that paid off for them. So there were some bonuses there. Uh, from Australia, obviously Stoinoff, 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 Styrus, they're all three of them, uh, are a bonus uh, here for Australia. Three players in one. Yeah. Stark was hitting the ball cleanly again at the end, got the ball to tail at the end, so uh, uh, bowled effectively in the death overs. Um, so, I mean, Australia will feel they've they've gained a player, I think, with Stoinis. Uh Whether he will follow through and play in England now, we'll have to wait and see. But, um, yeah, a good series, I think. Full crowd here today. Halcyon day. You know, benign pitch. Yeah, good. Enjoyed it. Lovely, sunny sellout at uh, Hamilton at Seddon Park, and we enjoyed that very much. Still plenty of cricket to come in the Australian summer. There's the T20 series against Sri Lanka, and then off to India for that much-anticipated test tour. But uh, it's enough from us here at the Chapel Hadley very Trophy, much. which has gone to New Zealand, as you may have gathered from Jeremy Coney. Thanks to him for joining us. Jeff Lemon with you as well for all our cricket and Kookaburra cricket. We'll see you next time. Cheers. I've picked the kahuna this year. Um, I like the uh, nice full shape through the through the edges here. Um, I play a lot of cricket in Perth and the Wacker, so it's quite a reasonable middle from uh, from the middle of the bat to the quite high of the bat. So it's a nice big high middle. Good for playing off the back foot, and um, you know especially on those bouncy bouncy wickets in Perth, it's, um, you know makes things a lot easier. I'm not uh, not too fussy with my uh, bat weight. I ideally like a 29, 210, just a little bit more heavy than uh, a lot of batsmen. I'm not the strongest guy going around, so I like uh, a bit more weight in my back.